The weapon meta has shaken up quite a bit due to some recent changes, so in this video I'll be covering the best and the worst weapons in Apex for Season 15. Let's go. Starting off in D tier should come as no surprise the P2020. This pistol is going to be the only gun going into D tier as the removal of hammer points in this season was the nail in the coffin to make it the most irrelevant gun in the game. I don't actually think Apex wants this gun to be good because they've mentioned something along those lines before, but to me it is interesting how much better the Mozambique is compared to this gun. The P2020 is never going to be a weapon you'll run all game. It's going to be something you're going to find off drop and you're going to be scrambling trying to get a kill or two with it. But as soon as you see any other gun, you're probably going to swap it out for that. And so for that reason, it's staying in D tier. Moving on to C tier. First up is the Devotion. The Devo is just not a great gun at the moment. It's received several small nerfs over the years, trying to bring it in line with the other guns. And it's wound up making it sort of a non-factor in season 15. The hip fire and the ADS recoil pattern are both probably the hardest to control in the game. And yes, at times it can be good, but you have to have it fully kitted and that's not always an easy option in a battle royale game. It also technically received a small nerf this season because this gun and the Havoc when equipped with a turbocharger now do one less damage per shot. Second in C tier is the Spitfire. Now while I was filming for this video trying to get clips with the Spitfire, it took me several games to remember it was no longer on floor loot this season. Initially I ranked this gun too high up last season after its recoil nerfs and the fact that it's now the second worst light gun in the game is exactly why it feels fine to have it in the crafter for now. I will not be using this gun at all in season 15 and I can't really come up with any good reasons for you to be using it either. Third in C tier is the 3030, and I know some of you are not going to be happy with this placement, but honestly, I find this gun to be pretty bad. I think it's extremely weak due to its fire rate and its bullet drop, and if you're forced to pick one of these up off drop and fight up close, the hip fire is worse than any of the other sniper or marksman rifles. I do know it has a high damage potential and can certainly do its thing if it has a 3x or 2 to 4x, but I never use this gun over some of the other long range weapons of the game. It could just be a me thing, because I know some of you love this, but yeah. C tier for me. There are much better options ahead. Next up in C tier are going to be the Prowler and the Hemlock. I'm grouping these two together because, well, they're the only two burst guns in the game. But beyond that, they've both been meta in the previous seasons, and since they have been nerfed, where they stand now, they're just kind of meh. The Prowler is good up close, but if you're running close range guns, I think 9 out of 10 times a shotgun is going to be better. You'll carry less ammo, and you'll be more effective with the shotgun. The Hemlock is sort of the same thing. Up close, its hip fire can be decent, but I just never know if I'm going to hit for 60 or for 15 with a burst. And for that reason, burst guns right now are just not that good. I would always take a flatline or an R301 over a hemlock if I had my choice. So they're both going in C tier for now. Last in C tier is going to be the L star. So this gun did get buffed a little bit and at times it has seemed pretty promising, particularly when you're up close with it. But when you run an L star, you're hoping it's going to fill that assault rifle role. Even though technically it's an LMG, you still feel like it's an AR or at least you need it to be. This gun is just not super consistent at range and it still has a ton of visual clutter attached to when you fire it, which can make connecting to enemies from a distance difficult because you can't really even see them. I'm also not a huge fan of the overheating concept with this gun. I'd rather have it just be a normal magazine like every other gun in the game but hey that's just my opinion i think this gun could sneak into b tier depending on how people are using it but for now i'm leaving it in c tier before i move on to b tier if you guys are enjoying this video all i ask in return is for you to hit that subscribe button getting super close to 100,000 subs and it'll mean a lot to me when i get there plus a ton of great content is on its way in season 15 so thank you for doing so okay moving on to the b tier weapons first up the mozambique this gun is no longer the joke of apex legends sure it received a slight nerf because the removal of hammer points, but honestly, I think this gun can hold its own without them. It has a fast fire rate, and its damage potential is pretty dang consistent. It also has some more range to it than the rest of the other shotguns. Where this gun does fall short, however, is when you are in an up-close shotgun fight and your opponent has any of the other shotguns. Because the Mozambique is a pistol, it can be incredibly awkward to ADS with it up close, especially if you're dealing with, say, a Mastiff or a Peacekeeper. The damage in those fights that you're going to be able to output may not be able to match up with some of these other shotguns, but I still think it's a great gun for early game. Second in B tier is the alternator. You know, this gun either shreds or it somehow completely shoots in an outline of the enemy. It's safe to say it's on and off at times. It's going in B tier because it's fairly strong because of its controllable recoil and slow fire 
fire rate, and it can be pretty effective at longer ranges, more so than, say, a Prowler. The alternator starts to get outclassed when you get into a close range fight or mid range fight, and your opponent has an R301, an R99, a car, or a Volt. Really, probably a few other guns as well, too. And that is because those weapons just shoot faster, and if that opponent is hitting their shots, the alternator is probably not gonna win. Early game scenario, though, this gun's still really strong. Third in B tier is the Longbow. This weapon has the fastest fire rate and it has the most bullets in its base mag out of all of the other snipers. It can be an absolute menace with the skull piercer on it, hitting enemies for up to 120 damage with a headshot. This is definitely a solid pick this season if you're looking to sit back and use some range. Second to last in B tier is going to be the Havoc. This AR is strong in medium to close range fights, but loses its utility at anything longer than 40 to 50 meters. The alterations to its recoil pattern over the years have made it not as good as it once was. It also has a completely different recoil pattern with a turbocharger attached, which has always screwed me up. If you don't have a turbocharger on it, you can also be a second or two behind getting the first shots off, and that can be the difference between you living or dying against some players. If I'm running a Havoc early game, I'm probably only holding it throughout the game to eventually switch it to another energy gun or another AR entirely. Last in B tier is going to be the Sentinel. I've been using this gun a lot on Broken Moon because of its wide open areas, and I have to say, I love the Sentinel. Its damage potential is high, and when you charge it up, it's the closest thing to a Kraber shot that you can get without actually having one. However, I think it could use a couple small buffs, and some ideas would be making it so that it has one more bullet in the base magazine, four shots for a bull action with a long reload time isn't great. And a second change I would make is that since Apex made it so that there's no heat decay on the charge up of the Rampage, it should definitely do the same for a charged up Sentinel. I don't think there's really any good reason that when you charge up a Sentinel, the charge should wear off if you're not shooting it. You still have to hit your shots, and even if you hit somebody for 158 on purple armor, that doesn't necessarily mean you're going to kill them. So I think a couple small buffs to the Sentinel would make this gun much better. Before I move on to ATR, I just want to clarify that all of the weapons in the care package currently are top tier, whether that's A or S. I mean, you could debate if you'd like, but they're all great guns. They're in the care package for a reason, so I'm not going to go into them individually in this video. All right, first up in A tier is the EVA 8. This gun was slightly buffed last season, and it's definitely a top tier weapon in Apex right now. It's not as overpowered as it once was back in seasons 8 through 10, which is a good thing, but it's not as irrelevant as it was back in season 13. This gun is fully automatic, so you can just hold down your trigger or your mouse, and it will go off. I don't like to do that. I like to control the fire rate myself, but this gun's damage just feels a lot more consistent than it previously had. So if you're looking for a close range secondary, you cannot go wrong with the EVA 8 in season 15. Next in A tier is the car, and this gun probably has the fastest time to kill for the SMG class. I wouldn't necessarily argue with people who say it's S tier, but the reason I'm putting it in A tier is because I find it to be extremely difficult to use at anything past 25 meters. With this fast fire rate and steep recoil pattern, it's only really good up close. And I know it's an SMG, it's not meant to have an assault rifle range, but weapons like the R9 and the Volt are a bit better at range in my opinion. So for now, I'm putting it in A tier for this first split, particularly because Broken Moon has a little bit more wide open spaces than World's Edge or Olympus does. Next up in A tier is the Mastiff. Now, since it has returned to floor loot in season 15, I have to say it's been quite refreshing getting three pumped off drop with it. No, but for real, this gun is certainly good, but I don't think it's as good as it was before it went into the care package. It used to have six shots, now it only has five, and it's damage and pellet size are a bit different from how it used to be. Now, I can appreciate that this isn't the easiest gun to balance. So for now, it's a solid pick going into A tier, but I do think there's another shotgun that I'll talk about a little bit later on that outclasses it. Fourth in A tier is the R99. With the very slight buff this gun saw this season, it did make it a tad bit better. It now has one extra bullet in blue and purple magazines. But even without this buff, I would still place this gun in A tier. When you're first beginning in Apex, this is not an easy gun to use, but once you master the recoil, well, it becomes a menace in close range engagements. It can be flexed for some mid range pokes at times, and since it shoots so fast, the one clip potential on this gun is high. If you still aren't using this gun because you don't think it's good, I would strongly suggest reconsidering that in season 15, especially if you're looking for a good close range weapon. Last in A tier is the charge rifle. Now, this weapon could totally be put in S tier, but I think very few will actually take this gun over other guns unless they are new to the game or the player is in some very competitive game mode of Apex where they will be needing to use some long range. The charge rifle is the only hit scan weapon in the game, making it feel sort of out of place and unbalanced at times. Okay, moving on to the best of the best, S tier. These are the guns that I would look for each and every game and ideally have. First up, it's going to be the Peacekeeper. Now, this weapon is in the replicator, at least for the first half of this season, and it saw a slight 
tweak to its blast pattern, but it seemed to have no real significant impact on the weapon. I'm putting it in S tier because it feels like it has the most consistent range with the highest damage potential in the game. You can still hit for over 100 in one hit, and you're not able to do that with any of the other shotguns currently. So it's definitely worth spending a couple seconds in a crafter this season to get a peacekeeper. Next up in S tier is the wingman. Body, body, headshot, you're dead. This gun's still insanely strong in season 15. It's so annoying to get three tapped with a wingman, and I don't really have too much else to say with this weapon. If you're good with it, it's amazing, but it's high risk, high reward. Missing a few wingman shots while your opponent has any automatic gun could put yourself at a disadvantage. So take that how you will. Definitely an S tier weapon though. Third in S tier is the triple take. Now it recently got buffed at the beginning of the season. It now has a faster fire rate and the choke condenses the bullet spread much quicker. This is very strong. It's definitely much better than it's previously been. And if you need it to, this weapon can also sort of flex as a shotgun. I'm using it mostly as a marksman rifle and I'll be using it a lot in season 15. Do not sleep on this gun if you're looking to run anything mid to long range. Fourth up in S tier is the Volt. It saw a slight nerf to its damage from range, but I still think it's the best SMG in the game. The time to kill with this weapon is very fast and it has a pretty easy recoil pattern to control. I know a lot of you guys are already using this gun, so putting it in S tier should come as no surprise, but I think you'll just be seeing a lot more of it in season 15. Fifth in S tier is the G7 Scout. With this new map sort of forcing a long range meta, the G7 is an excellent choice in season 15. This is probably the strongest marksman weapon in my eyes and it's due to its high damage per shot, but it's very fast fire rate. This gun is the perfect flex weapon for having something long range, but also not feeling like it's completely useless if the fight starts to get a little bit more close up. It has a decent hip fire, and although it's not great, it's certainly way better than the other single fire guns, excluding the triple take from that. Well, the one thing I love about this gun is that if you have a 2x, a 3x, or a 2 to 4x on it, well, they all make this gun feel powerful and unique in its own way. I strongly recommend trying out the G7 Scout this season. Second to last in S tier is the Flatline. This is one of the best assault rifles in the whole game. It has a very high damage per second, and its hip fire is also very strong. Sometimes it still surprises me how quickly you can down someone with a Flatline. The recoil pattern is more of a zigzag, so it's not super easy to learn and control early on, but once you put the time in and master this weapon, you'll find it will be extremely well worth. It. All right, we made it to the end of S tier, and it's going to be the R301. This is the easiest gun and the most effective gun to use. Somehow, it's also not annoying to die to as well. This gun is effective at long range, mid range, and close range, even if you have to hit fire it, which is not a super common thing for most of the other guns in the game. Also, I have to say, this gun is definitely the best gun on floor loot in all of Apex, and it probably always will be. All right, so now you know what the best and worst weapons are in season 15. Well, if you don't learn about these eight things that stop players from improving at Apex, then it won't matter what guns you have. I covered it all in this video here. Check it out next. Thanks for watching. Peace.